Um, excuse me, I can't find my mum. She was, um, she was sick. She had spots on her face and hands. She went to go get some herbs, and she was supposed to come back the same day. That was last ten day, though. Wow. Thanks. My mum would like this. She's the best cook in the world. And she taught me, too. I'll, um, I'll look for her. I think she'll probably come soon. Thanks a lot. The place was empty. Keep those thugs away from my family. Denuvia! Get these spotters out of my house now! Arthur, sweetheart, you paid me and my boys to be caravan guards, not cattle wranglers. If you want us to get our hands dirty, it'd be our pleasure. But that'll be extra. I just want to remove these unlawful interlopers from my property. I can't let them stay here. What if the little crack gets into the basement? My point exactly. <laughs> They're like... Kobolds, you let one in and soon the place will be crawling with them. I'm a very magnanimous individual, but this is my home! Either they leave, or I'll make them. I'm fine, they can stay. Don't blame me when they turn on you like the mongrels they are. I respect your hustle, sweetheart, but it won't work on me. You've stepped on the guild's toes, and we'd like a little something to make it better. The guild, a loose coalition unifying every criminal outfit in the city under one collective rule, from cut purses to contract killers. I'd say you'll live to regret it, but honestly, I'm not so sure you'd live. You're... serious. Let's forget this unpleasantness ever happened. Come on, boys. We've got places to be. Let's see here. She'll be all right. She's a brave girl. We'll get through this. Should be easy. Oh dear. Someone's left a trap out for us. Be careful. There are traps about. Traps. How can 
consider it. the home of a sweet, generous soul. It might be worth looking into his donations. Who knows what he's been giving? Donations? Do you know I have eyes? The refugees. If you don't have anything to donate, you can get going. Well, if you must, I suppose it saves me the walk. But if you're gonna do it, hurry up. Go slowly. This place is dangerous. Careful, I might. rummaging around in there. Show yourself. You have two seconds to explain yourself before you're under arrest. What? Those are children's toys. W which means if a child had picked one up, I don't want to think about it. How do I know you're not the one who planted those explosives? All right, I guess it can't hurt. I'll check up on the rest of the goods. You try and find whoever is responsible for this. I thought this assignment was going to be dull. Now, now, mind your no tongue. such luck. Please just go home. You're ruining a perfectly uneventful posting with this nonsense. The flaming fists are supposed to protect this good city, but they allow trash and vermin to take our homes and goods. Oh, another visitor, I see. Listen, we keep letting the likes of you in. Soon, there'll be no room left for any of us true Baldarians. Excuse me? I was born inside the city walls, a Baldarian through and through. Wherever you're from, clearly they don't teach manners. I just lost a wager, thanks to you. Who are you? Someone who bet that you'd never be foolish enough to actually show your face in this city again. But here you are. And the gold in my purse is soon to take flight. There have been whispers about you, sister. About your faith, your loyalty, your company. I can't help but feel the strangest twinge of disgust as I look upon you. Is it true? Has Our Lady forsaken you? Of course not. A cover to throw our enemies off the scent. I suppose you weren't deemed important enough to be informed of the plan. That would have been fine deception in most cases. But your lying tongue cannot mask the empty pit in your spirit. She truly has abandoned you. Now I must report your reappearance. 
If you are intent on bringing matters to a head, then seek out the House of Grief in the Lower City. Though, if I was you, I'd be very tempted to just forget it all and disappear. You have some form of doing so, after all. friend fine day isn't it forgive me you're in no mood to talk about the weather your journey here was a hard one no doubt is this your first time in Baldur's gate it's a fine city isn't it no better place to hail from used to be you'd arrive knowing you had a full belly in a warm bed waiting for you not anymore these days, there's barely enough to go around. Add the refugees on top, and well, folk aren't feeling too generous. Tensions. That's putting it mildly. Some well-to-dos in the city donated enough to see the newcomers right for the time being. Only they didn't bother helping everyone else. Locals going without while strangers feast. It stoked the fire, all right. Some Baldarians are kicking up a fuss round the front of the barn as we speak. If I wasn't wearing this uniform, I'd walk round there and teach him a lesson they'd never forget. Ha! <laughs> what peace. If no one steps in, there'll be bodies piled high in the streets before long. Those refugees have been leeching on our city for too long. If we don't show them that we mean business, they'll bleed us dry. We need to march round the front and kill every last one of them. Let's see them eat our food with their guts on the floor. What do you say? Tell them! I'll cut out their eyes and make them watch! You're the Lick Spittle who crushed the Bone Lord's thrall. Have you come begging, sniffing for our stones? Gortash won't like that. A throat his black hand can't choke the spit from. You'll need to bleed and carve this city if you want to turn him to grave meat. He shivers at the thought. <laughs> When you find the Lordling, tell him Oren is watching. So Oren is a shapeshifter. How long has she been watching? My friend from the Hag Swamp, you join us as we honor our fallen dead. You're a bright light on a dark day. Even you, my erstwhile quarry. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> hello again. Frey Valdisk Durovna. Frey Valdisk Ablast. I feel we're intruding. We should leave quickly. Calm yourself. You will not be harmed. Our leader has called off the hunt. She wishes to speak to you. Im orak nete. Trasine tra. So, 
The impossible spawn walks among us in the blazing sun. We have been looking for you. The last time your friend came to our camp, he stole our children, our future. When I was hunting you, I was to bring you back here, interrogate you, discover how to save our children, and then destroy you. But things have changed. You have changed. Is it true you left your master? That you broke the spell that binds you to him? Uh, well, I, I mean, uh, kind of. It's a long story, honestly. One is just as important as the other, I find. And our luck has been poor. We have tried to save our children once already, attacking Kazadorzar's palace at first light. Even then, it was too well defended. But if his own spawn approached, someone he thought he could control, he would throw his doors open and welcome you in. And once inside, you could do what we could not. You could save the children you damned. You don't know Casador like I do. He's merciless. You want me to march into the lion's den and save your children? But I promise you, they're already dead. I spent two hundred years bringing him victims! Each and every one was whisked away to be fed on that night. But you never saw him feed yourself. He could keep prisoners for days before killing them. I know our plight is grim, but if there is even a chance to save them, we must take it. If our children are truly gone, then we ask for blood. I know you can understand that, Spawn. I suppose. Yes. Yes. Revenge, I can do. Thank you. From me and all my people. If you can do this, we will be in your debt. You have lived a life of violence and sin. You have stolen lives, broken families, and caused immeasurable grief. Doing this will not right those wrongs. <laughs> If you're trying to encourage me, you're failing abysmally. But it will be a start. You may still be redeemed. Please go. Time is short, but we will see you again when it is done. the unconscious body of a mind flare, glistening and raw. A newborn, unattended. How fortunate. Oh, but it is. This one has only just transformed. It is weak, vulnerable, its potential ripe for harvesting. Go on, kill it, absorb its power, just like you did before. What? No, I've had so little time.
are still fresh. You can absorb its potential if you consume it. got enough mouse to feed. We don't need your kind. Another quake. What's going on? Come to finish the job. An idiot. That's who. I started a fight I couldn't bloody win. Ah! Oh, by the gods, it hurts. Help me, please. No. It's too late for that. No portion or spell can fix this. <sighs> Get this blade out of me. Use it. Kill me. Kill me now. That's it. I'm ready. That's the best you can do. So weak. Mm. Still rolling in the muck, I see. Gortash knows you are coming. Knows you have the Bone Lord's stone. Do not let him hiss hot air into your worm-weakened brain. He will sniff out your mercies, drag them forth, and use them to dress his atrocities. <laughs> Remember, his throat spits lies, but my blade carves the truth. You will read it on your skin soon enough. She's toying with me. What does she want? is trapped. Best avoid that trap. Nobody messes with the Stone Lord rattling. Nine fingers sent her love, asshole. Your Stone Lord's a dead man walking. You help me kill these asses. The girls will sprinkle you with gold. You picked the wrong side, cock. Slice them! Slice them now! Good stranger. Someone to try to slink away rather than get involved. They wouldn't earn the gratitude of the guild. A new flavor of scum that's been muscling in on our business. Agents of the Stone Lord. Lucky you. He's a newcomer to our delightful underworld. And he doesn't play nice with others. 
We think the Stone Lord and his cronies are in league with the absolute cultists. This little operation here certainly suggests so. They were shifting something valuable by boat. But that something belongs to the Guild now. Of course! The Guild always rewards good work. Now scram! <clears throat> What's hiding here? A child. Someone doesn't like visitors. He wants to Never teach them refugees a lesson, right? Right! Goodness me, that's terrible! Are you joking? This is great! Think of all the work we've been doing! Stop clearing outside to the rest of the rest of the rest of the crying one weeps today. Our father Logan is dead. Murdered. <laughs> I don't want to talk. My heart is in mourning. Here we be. Ah! Take me to my... Let more outsiders in, and more Baldurians die. Duke Stelney, Father Lorcan, it's no coincidence. We have faith here, Bill. Faith in people, no matter where they're from. Who had more faith than Father Lorcan? How did that work out? Exactly. Logan let a killer into our temple due to his misguided compassion. His faith got him murdered. Bill, I beg you, be quiet. Even sinners receive Ilmater's grace, and Father Lorgan knew that. We don't pick and choose who we aid. Thank you, stranger. I take some solace knowing that he died in Ilmater's service. Does Ilmater's service involve protecting heretic absolutists? Or perhaps I missed that sermon. Enough, Bill. You seem a kind soul. Our temple is open to you. Walk well. Of exactly this. Exactly this. Ilmater's edict is to welcome all into his embrace. So Look, investigator. Brilgor might have been a criminal, but he was no murderer. You're missing something. You have to be. Enough, Yanis. Listen to yourself. You are defending a man who ritually slaughtered your high priest. The evidence speaks for itself. Brilgor killed Father Lorgan, then, be it out of shame or profane duty, offed himself with the same blade. Case closed, Sister Yanis. Shitey little elephant. Oh, um, I apologize, stranger. Language like that hardly befits a rector of Ilmater. You could certainly say that. Two people just died on temple grounds. A high priest, Father Logan, and one of the new refugees, Brilgor. Investigator Valeria thinks it's a murder. ...and is content to blame Brilgor, the politically convenient target. Brilgor was a refugee. No one sticks up for them at the best of times, and with Gortash in power... ...well, I expect the Flaming Fists will ban refugee aid now one of them's blamed for murder.
feel free to look around the temple. But fair warning, the investigator won't change her mind without significant new evidence. Charette's caress would be my best bet. That's her usual haunt after closing a case. Valeria never found the murder weapon, so that could be a start. Anything disproving the refugee murder suicide angle, really. I can tell you where to find her, but she won't be very chatty, I'm afraid. Shira passed away last year, peacefully, mind. We buried her in the crypt under the temple, if you wish to visit. I really hope you find something. For all our sakes. I've said all I have to say already. Now I just want to pack up my kitchen and leave. <laughs> Investigator. That miniature mastodon is about as much use as rats in the pantry or flies in the soup. Father Lorgan's gone. Murdered. And now they're blaming a refugee for it. No. Brilgore was a nice bloke. He came a couple of times for soup. Potato chowder was his favorite. Didn't seem the murderous type. But what do I know? Some folk didn't like how he looked after the refugees. But I don't think they'd kill him for it. At least... I hope they wouldn't. That's a scary thought. What ails you? Marsh fever? Feather lung? Be quick, I've not got all day. What do you want to know? I reckon Investigator Valeria is right. One of the refugees killed him. Cruelly, too. They cut off his hand, sawed right through the bone. I found a paralytic poison on one of his wounds. Logan was alive while they took the hand. He just couldn't scream. It's sick. We give them everything, and all we get is nothing but a good man to bury. The corpse regards you. Lifelessly. Lorgan. Reverend. Open hand. Dwarf. Dressed in red. The corpse remains silent. It does not know. Tunnels from the cellar. Refuge. A poison blade. Paralysis. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. This must be where Shira Clarwin is buried. Here lies Flintster Sunseeker. Born 1400 DR, died 1456 DR. Here lies Sister Shira Clarwin. Date of birth unknown, died 1491 DR. Here it is, the tomb of the Amulet Spirit's granddaughter. Time for a family reunion. <laughs> Darling Shira, faithful to the crying god, long didst I wait, 
only to find thine empty flesh. Oh, honored Shira. Her spirit hath fled, and her body but merely a husk. <laughs> Swear I did to shed this foul mania and bestow it upon Shira. She was to endure, to suffer, as was her god Ilmata's want. Who now shall bear the madness Shah has wrought on me so I might no longer suffer? Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> shall it be thou? The monk himself holds your answer. Tasha's hideous laughter is a powerful skill, but earning it may come at the cost of wisdom. muscles tingle and your mouth twitches as the laughing madness spreads through you. The madness tugs at your mind, prods in places best left untouched. You feel your wisdom begin to drain. You remain wise as ever, even as Shah's madness spreads outward. You giggle, struck by the absurdity of the moment. A spirit hiding inside an amulet has brought you to the body of his granddaughter and possessed it. Outrageous. Ridiculous. Once again, you feel your wisdom draining away. Hilarious. What is it? The urge to laugh dwindles. Though you can't help but chuckle. You withstood the monk's madness and earned Tasha's hideous laughter. My friend, forgive me, for this mind was not mine own. May laughter be thy gift, never thy curse, the morning lord calls. Canst thou feel the warmth of his blessing? This is not my final twilight, but a new dawn. Farewell. The corpse is an empty husk once more. The monk, liberated from madness, is finally at peace. He's gone. Well, he was always good for a laugh. Get the fun The corpse regards you lifelessly. Red dwarf, tree. 
sticky. Hungry. The corpse remains silent. It does not know. Oui. Oui. The corpse tries to speak, but something prevents it. Someone was arranging these corpses. What for? Let's see what... Oh, a heart, a liver, a few fingers. Not the most appetizing find. The same one that ended Father Logan, perhaps. to Sword Coast Couriers, to send and to serve. Delivery not guaranteed. I'm alive and well, aren't I? Earning an honest living, serving my community. I've plenty to be happy about. Though, I will admit it's been tough recently. We've had to cut down our courier routes. Too risky with that army rampaging nearby. I'll tell you, it's left me in a right pickle. I've sent what I can by pigeon, but now something's attacking them and all. Become a postmaster, Danzo. It'll be easy. Nobody mentions having to spend your evenings hunting for pigeon carcasses, do they? You sense there's more to his anxiety than a few missing letters. Oh! Well, uh, one of the missing letters is my own correspondence. A, a personal matter, nothing serious. But you can understand, if people think I can't even deliver my own letters, I'd be finished. Not the foggiest. Normally they fly true as an elven arrow. Something nearby is snatching them. I can tell you that much. You do that? Well, if it's not too much bother, I... Yes, I'd appreciate the help. Bring me the letter, unopened, of course, and I'll happily compensate you for your troubles. Refugee. Duke, time to pay Worm's Rock a visit. Wolf! Ah, you speak, which means you're not a dog. So, 
What the hell are you doing in my kennels? Found him, did you? I can't say I'm surprised. Gomwick never kept him on a tight leash. Bring him here, and I'll give him a once-over for you. Check him for worms and so on. Oh, yes, please. I'd love to see him. He's a good dog. We'd both love to see him again. Up, Dringo, and get back to work. And you've been slacking as well, Scratch, my boy. This dog is property of Sword Coast Couriers. I'll take him off your hands now. Gomwick was his handler, not his owner. I can do whatever I please. He's my dog. Now get out. This is a private yard. I'm not surprised. Gonwick always indulged him. And he's got a spark in his eye I don't like. Looks lively. Take the useless mutt if you're so inclined. I'll have nothing more to do with him. It's not just Scratch. She's always hurting the dogs. Shut your mouth, Dringo. Last warning. Fine. You think you can do a better job without me? Be my guest. They're a useless bunch of mongrels. You're welcome to them. Trasim seems nervous, but you can't quite tell why. Kitty? How vulgar. You can call me... Actually, it's better if you don't call me at all. That'll be all, thank you. Please. I don't dirty my paws for... Anything less than pheasant. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy luxuriating in solitude. be able to lay so much as a finger on me. Still, I've no desire to watch you flail about in the attempt. I ate the pigeons. Are you satisfied? I prevaricated before. Pigeon is my second most favorite meat. Importance is relative. A letter may be important to one, a growling belly may be more important to another. Uh, but let's not get bogged down in semantics. I believe you were just leaving, weren't you? Ta! Another aviary, you say? Well, that does sound quite interesting. The brood here is getting a little thin. While I'm seeking out this new feast hall, I'll pay a few visits around town. 
I might have sussed some interesting items I'd rather like to get my paws upon. If I find anything interesting, I might even be willing to barter. Might. Tara. Away. You've uh, stumbled across those letters yet? Thank the gods. Unopened as well. Oh, what a relief. My customers will be most pleased. Here's your fee. As promised. <laughs> 